So black-legged ticks are actually a year-round threat. They're one of the few that is. Um, the thing to recognize about ticks is that each tick has three life stages. So the female lays eggs. Those eggs hatch into what's called a larva. The larvae are tiny. They tend to feed on rodents. They then molt to a nymph, which are also fairly small. Then they molt into an adult. Most ticks, those life cycle stages go on during what we would traditionally think of as spring, summer, fall. It just so happens that for the black-legged tick, the larvae are active around late fall, so August, September, October, and then the nymphs over winter, and they're active in May through about July. The nymphs are what infect people because the nymphs are so small that even when they're feeding on you, you don't necessarily see them. I have been infected. Um, the rash showed up on my inner elbow during t-shirt weather. I never saw the tick. I saw the rash. They're that small. The year-round component comes in, though, that those nymphs then will molt into the adult. The adult black-legged tick starts to feed in October, well past when most people think that their tick risk has gone to zero. And those ticks, those adult deer ticks, will actually feed all through the winter, up until about April or May, depending on what area of the country you're in, any day that the air temperature is above freezing. And people think of the winter, so I'm from Wisconsin. Yesterday it was four below wind chill lots of snow. 10 days ago it was 50 degrees. And as we look at the weather patterns in any given site, if you look at the high temperature for the day, what you find is December, January, February, yeah, they're cold, but there's always a few days in a row or weeks in a row where the temperatures get into the high 30s, 40s. I've, I've actually seen days in Milwaukee uh, where it reached 80 degrees in January. And those are days when, as you can imagine, the dog owners all of a sudden it's warm, they want to go outside, they take their dog with them, and they just don't think about the fact they're walking right into those adult black-legged ticks. Um, and their dog can be infected because they're not thinking about tick control at that time of year. So the takeaway is, because of the life cycle of the black-legged tick, I like to tell pet owners that they don't need tick control every day of the year, but they need it every month of the year. Because you just never know what tomorrow's temperature is going to be. Typically, we think of the Northeast and the Upper Midwest as being the high-risk zones. Um, those are areas where, if you look at the data, uh, the percentage of dogs that are actually tested for Lyme disease, about 8 to 15% of them will probably be positive. Um, however, it's not a zero-risk disease for a lot of other areas of the country. There are areas in Texas where the black-legged tick is 45% of them are actually infected with Borrelia. And you really wouldn't think of Texas as being an area where your dog could potentially pick up Lyme disease, but if you go to the right spots, it, it is. So it's something that people are recognizing as a spreading threat. Um, but if you were looking at where the real hot zones are, they're still gonna be the Northeast and the upper Midwest. It's just spreading south and kind of to the sides. We like to think of prevention of Lyme disease uh, with an acronym. We call it VET or V-E-T. So the V is for vaccination. Um, and there are very good vaccines in the market. Uh, Beringer Engelheim actually carries what's called Recombitec Lyme. Uh, it's the only non-adjuvanted, uh, lipidated OSPE vaccine. Very good data behind it, um, good field experience. The E stands for education, for things like we were just talking about. We need to educate the dog owner that tick control, especially for the black-legged tick, is a year-round concern. And then the T stands for tick control. Um, I recommend for tick control NexGuard. Uh, NexGuard is the first and only uh, oral tick product that is actually labeled for the prevention of Borrelia infection because it kills the deer tick before it transmits the infection. So you put those three things together and you can do a really good job of helping prevent your dog from being exposed to Borrelia burgdorferi and potentially getting Lyme disease. NextGuard. Check out NextGuardClinic.com, where you can find all of the resources and tools you need to improve your online marketing, provide more staff training, and promote pet owner education. 
with live webinars and access to news on hot topics, including the latest industry news and facts, right at your fingertips. Visit us today and do it all at nextguardclinic.com.